they leave their seats and walk quietly to the enclosed cloakroom at the room's front end to get their jackets and sweaters or wraps, as the <laughs> nuns call it. Instead, they sat and laughed among them, amongst themselves, proud of their refusal to obey even the slightest order that the old wrinkled, angry nun gave <laughs>
They, of course, were heroes in the neighborhood, and the five admired them, but they were individuals. They had acted alone and separately and were never able, able to bring the full concentration of the combined prowess to bear on the hapless mountain. <laughs> this year's disturbers were different. There were five of them, and they had the benefit of history, and they knew that Zeta would soon be retiring. They were fully aware of the opportunity they had to become the greatest group of disturbers in all of GC. <laughs> <laughs> Claim that coveted honor, they realized that they not only had to take disturbing a new, to a new level, but they had to disturb as a unit, as one. <laughs> and that they did, but in the first few weeks, they had all already been beaten several times by the Why her dry, scaly hands cracked with the point of the club with the rung of a chair, a four foot long, half inch square, solid piece of wood that formed yeah. a crossover. <laughs> 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 Classroom chairs. Only one of these yes. fueled their desire to do even more hurls in the classroom and made them heroes to themselves at least. With every whack of Zeta's hand, with every punch from her foamy fist, with every thump from her chair room, they laughed harder and disturbed more. <laughs> when Zeta attacked, I mean discipline. <laughs> the others stormed into action and raised ruckuses in areas, other areas of yes. the world. <laughs> Sometimes they ran around even screaming and laughing and stomping their feet. Sometimes they raced up to see it and talked to her. <laughs> no. 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 no matter what it did, they had always worked. Zeta would stop beating her original targets and chase them. And what had always started as a small-scale disturbance usually turned into a classroom-wide riot. <laughs> and now, now it was happening again. Zeta, the three-foot, four-foot-long standard no run, issue Rubenos Nums Rosary dangling from her belt, and the starchy stem of her full body black and white linen. <laughs> and smelling up the room was charging towards the Sturfer's Row. Charging towards the Sturfer's Row. <laughs> At least she thought she was charging. With the Sturfer's, she was limping slowly and taking forever to get there. <laughs> Worried in the attention that a battle with her problem of room to force other 34 students, especially the girls, most of whom giggled, <laughs> as many lives as you want. Tina was at row three, approaching disturbers row from the classroom's left side. The boys held their positions and laughed louder. As, as she hit row four, the five foot tall nun began raising the pointer that she held in her right hand. The disturbers started talking to each other, pretending that they hadn't heard her earlier order. And that Shay didn't see her back and uh, heading back towards him. The point rose high into the air as he crossed row five, just a few steps away from the disturbers <laughs> row. Still a voice fell out and pretended not to see her. She walked another two steps and then rah, rah! <laughs> the pointer came down and slammed on top of Gary Cole's table like <laughs> She had swung with the intention of smashing Gary's arms as they lay folded across the top of the desk. But just at the right time, right at the right moment, he jumped out of his chair, and he and the other ser the servers ran to the other side of the room, denying the nun satisfaction <laughs> and the pain, the physical pain. The other boys had done the same. They had reacted instantly to avoid Zeta at the pointer, and she was angry. She shuffled slowly across the desk trying to get to the side where the disturbance had fled, but the disturbance were long gone, and they had scattered like cockroaches and all over all over the room. The <laughs> was already at the front of the room, running through the drawers and to the desk. Adults, he had brought an ass and a headlock in the room, too. <laughs> Bozo was assaulting Burner Julian Rose. <laughs> dumping his books on the floor. Colbo was marching around the room, stomping his it's wooden floor shouting over and over. We don't have wraps. We have jackets and coats. <laughs> Bozo, Bozo had found his way to row five, where he crouched down behind it, ready for an assault on 
Thomas Snevin, who had annoyed Cedar with his habit of loudly blurting out anything that was on his mind. <laughs> it never mattered to Thomas what the subject was being taught. In the spelling class, he had something to say about religion. Well, he just shouted it, and always to the amusement of the entire class. Bozo wound up for his assault on Nevin by raising his arm behind his back as far as it was story. <laughs> swung the arm forward with full fury and... Ah! <laughs> Tommy Snedden shrieked so loud the world could hear. He jolted up in the air and flopped back down on his chair and wailed again while grabbing for his red fucking <laughs> Bozo had stabbed him in the ass with the pointed end of a geometry company. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 